Hello and welcome to the PVA Nightly Rundown. I am your host, Luke Croft, and this is the daily gaming news show where I run you through all of the gaming news that you may have missed throughout the day so that you don't look like a fucking idiot at the water cooler tomorrow. Happy Labor Day to everybody out there, and also, apologies. I was gone all last week. I didn't do the show all last week, and uh, I'll explain that uh, here in just a second. But, yes, I do hope you guys had a fantastic Labor Day. Hopefully you got to enjoy a three-day weekend. I got to enjoy a four-day weekend. It was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, last week. Um, last week I just kind of hit a wall. Um, so... I'm be totally totally honest with you guys. Work has been a little bit blah for me lately, a little tough, um, a little hard for me to get motivated. Um, and uh, I'm not going to get into uh, uh, into into all of that, but um, yeah, life is real life stuff has been a little messy for me as of late. And so last week I was like, I'm going to just take a couple days take a break, unplug, sit in front of my TV, watch How I Met Your Mother and, uh, you know, play Madden and Overwatch and not really worry about doing the show, just kind of remove some of the extracurricular from my life just to take a step back, take a little break, reset. So I did that, um, and then we did the show Wednesday, great show, uh, great episode of PVA Radio, didn't miss uh, our episode of that. And then Thursday, we had a little bit of a miscommunication among Larry and I about when Man of Madon was going to be uh, releasing and uh, available. He thought it was going to be at 9, so I just handed him over uh, the 9 o'clock slot so he could stream Man of Madon. Um, but it turns out it was nine o'clock Pacific time. So, uh, we figured that out like five minutes after nine o'clock. So, uh, it, by that point didn't have anything together. And then I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to take Friday off as well. So I'm totally recharged though. I'm feeling really, really good. Um, I had a four day weekend and we, uh, accomplished quite a bit. I watched a lot of esports. Watched, watched a lot of regular sports over the weekend. College football is back, baby. It is back. And the NFL comes back this week on Thursday. Exciting stuff, man. See, esports is perfect because it starts to wind down around this time. So, you know, LCS playoffs ended last weekend. Uh, LEC playoffs are coming to an end next week. We're in. We're into the Overwatch League playoffs. The playoff. Uh, the play-in tournament happened over the weekend. All of this is going to be done by the end of September, and we'll have you know some some tournaments. Um, but all the esports stuff will wind down and then ramping up college football, the NFL, and then the greatest professional sports league of all time, the NBA. Coming coming back. NBA 2K out on Friday, September 6th. So I'll probably stream a little bit of that this week. Going to stream some Overwatch. Uh, may pull the PlayStation in here and, and stream some Madden as well. Uh, just going to figure that out. So did that. Uh, and then let's see. Yesterday... I feel like yesterday we accomplished some stuff. I can't remember what it was. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't accomplish anything yesterday. Oh, yeah. We cleaned a little bit yesterday, which was nice. I watched the Madden tournament. Um, and then today we cleaned out all of the overhead ca- uh, cabinets. We're transitional period of my life right now. Uh, we're thinking about moving, uh, looking at moving. And so... Um, we're getting the house ready to get put up on the market. And part of that is, is a, is a purge of shit. So, you know, uh, a lot of stuff accumulates in life, especially when you're married. And so we've been going through and, uh, a room, uh, one room every weekend, going through, cleaning out everything we can, getting rid of as much as we can, packing up as much as we can, and just getting ready to hopefully put the house on the market, um, soon. And uh, so today we went through the kitchen. We got rid of like three boxes of stuff, which is going to be awesome. Some of that going to the Goodwill. Some of that stuff going back to uh, my in-law's house, which which will be good. But there's like a a feeling of a weight being lifted when you get rid of things. Now, I'm not super sentimental by any stretch. Um, I, I tell this story all the time. I, I moved to college with a U-Haul full of crap. Uh, and I moved out of my dorm the first year, my first year of college, um, in the back of my Pontiac Grand Prix. 
because I just got rid of stuff. Like I, I, I realized that when I don't need things and I get rid of those things. Um, and so, but my wife, on the other hand, she, she's more like, she's sentimental. Like she remembers when, when people give her things, who, who gave her those things and she doesn't like getting rid of those things. So I'm, ha- I'm trying to be that voice. Hey, just get rid of that and go to the Goodwill. We haven't touched it in two years. And so, uh, yeah, so that's what we've been doing. It's been it's been pretty awesome. So four day work week coming up as well, which always feels nice. You start you start your week feeling like you're already halfway through it. So so that's good. Um, but yeah, hope you guys had a good Labor Day weekend. You can see the ticker down here. Uh, this has all the stories that we're covering tonight, and then what we do is we keep these and we'll we'll begin adding to them throughout the week as well. Um, so that this will just be a running tally of all the news. But what you'll notice is very slim pickings over here today for news labor day not a great not a very fast news day in the games industry everybody's you know taking off um so we've got a couple stories that we're going to get to um but let me give you the rigmarole here again this is the pva nightly rundown the nightly gaming news show where i run you through all of the gaming news that you may have missed that you don't look like a freaking idiot at the water cooler tomorrow um you can watch those live over here every single weeknight, except for Wednesdays over here on twitch.tv slash PVA radio. Um, and then if you can't catch us live, you can watch us the very next day on youtube.com slash PVA radio, uh, where we break it out topic by topic, new segment by new segment, or you can watch it in its entirety. So there's the, uh, there's the rigmarole the rundown here at the, at the top. Let's jump into it. Let's get the week started like we get every week started with games that are releasing today. And as always, we get this from Kotaku's.com, the weekend games from Zach Zweizen. And releasing today, Monday, September 2nd, we have only one burn on PC. Adventure Slime on PC. Mostly Intense Monster Defense on PC. Jigsaw Puzzle Pro Edition on PC, and then Devader on PC and Mac. I've heard there's going to be a hot, hot esports scene for Jigsaw Puzzle Pro Edition, so be on the lookout for that. Um, actually, a pretty big week for releases today. Uh, uh, pretty big week for releases this week. As you see, coming through here, we've got Final Fantasy VIII. Yo, that's Scafidi. What is going on, my dude? Welcome, welcome. Um, Spyro Reignited Trilogy coming on Switch. You know, you can scroll down through here. You've got the Monster Hunter expansion that's coming as well. So um, we're into the thick of release season. We are into fall gaming. So just prep your body, prep your wallets, because there is money to be spent. All right? A lot of money to be spent. Tons of money. Also, seeing this over here with uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker reviews coming out for this over the weekend. I'm seeing a lot of nines, a lot of tens, a lot of really rave reviews for this. I'm very, very excited about it. I like the Joker. I love Joaquin Phoenix. Match made in heaven. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Those are your games that are releasing today. All right. Let's get on to the news, guys. Um, the first one's a big one, and I feel like I'm probably going to camp here for a while because I've got quite a bit to say. Former developers on Starbound say Chucklefish exploited them for free work. Um, This is from a very long report over on Polygon. I'm going to drop this in the chat. Um, This is definitely recommended reading, guys. I will link to this in the description of the video if you're watching over on YouTube as well. Um, Because we're not going to go through this whole thing. As you can see, this story is hella long. Um, But essentially... Some former developers that worked on Chucklefish's uh, 2014 game Starbound have come out and said that they were they worked on the game for free, um, and some of them even claim that they worked for hundreds of hours uh, on the game uh, as a development resource and, and multiple other uh, facets of the game, uh, and received zero compensation uh, for it. So. Um, let's see. Let's let's just read some of these uh, uh, some some of these quotes here. It says, uh, "Former, let me pull this over here. Former worker Fetal Star, Fetal Star, uh, aka Christine, tweeted, quote, 
I put in at least 100 hours of work and didn't see any sort of compensation. I was really naive and too afraid to ask to be paid because anyone who did would be screamed at. I also witnessed a lot of inappropriate behavior, end quote. Um, there's also stories through here of teenagers working for, you know, a couple of years and not seeing any compensation from the work that they did. Um, let's see. I want to make sure I get the names right. Damon Reese, um, he was credited as a contributor on the game. And he said, quote, I was a teenager with no game development experience and I was taken advantage of by uh, Finn Bryce. He very consciously manipulated and exploited not only myself, but almost everyone on and around the team, end quote. Uh, Reese recalled being asked by Bryce, uh, Bryce if working for free would be a problem. Quote, this felt normal and fun and exciting because I didn't value myself for my work. I thought that the experience and exposure I gained from working on the game would be enough compensation. That is obviously not true, but it is a very easy lie for an eager teenager to swallow. Additionally, there were already a number of other contributors, many of them teenagers like me who weren't getting paid um they also go on to tell stories about how um finn bryce knew that he had the, like these this teenage labor this free labor kind of had a, an expiration date on it where he knew okay i'm gonna be able to work them for x amount of time and then they're gonna start to wise up to the fact that they're wasting all this time and not getting any any money but by the time they were burnt out and ready to move on they had already lined up other individuals to take their place who were going to be willing to uh, to work for free. Um, Reese goes on to say, quote, when the game's re uh, beta released in December 2013, it sold over a million copies in its first month. And yet Chucklefish Management still considered it wholly acceptable to continue using unpaid workers to complete their game, end quote. Um Reese is now uh, the lead writer for uh, Route 59 Games and says, quote, I have regrets over the whole thing, obviously. I regret not quitting sooner and not standing up for myself, but I refuse to blame myself uh, for being exploited as a teenager, end quote. Um, Chucklefish did respond to these allegations. They said, quote, we're aware and saddened by the current allegations against Chucklefish regarding Starbound's early development. During this time, both the core crew and community contributors were co collaborating via a chat room and dedicated their time for free. Community contributors were under no obligation to create content, work to deadlines, or put in any particular number of hours. Everyone was uh, credited or remunerated remunerated uh, as per their agreement uh, it's been almost a decade since starbound's development first began and from then chucklefish has grown considerably into an indie studio that has a strong emphasis on good working practices uh, providing a welcoming environment for all employees and freelancers our doors remain open to any related parties who wish to discuss their concerns with us directly end quote so yeah this is um This is one of those stories that's like, we used this last week uh, on PVA radio when we were talking about gaming's Me Too moment. It's one of these stories that's like, it doesn't come as a shock to you that stuff like this happens, but it is shocking when you read the accounts of it. Like giving hundreds of hours of development work to a studio for completely free, especially when that studio has gone on to sell a million... <laughs> Uh, like millions of dollars worth of uh of the your hard work is just insane to me um i'm trying to find uh, i meant to pull out there was a, a very short quote in here about one of the things uh they were they were promised in here but it was essentially like i think i can find it by doing this Uh, yeah, here's a, here's a part of it. One former worker who asked that their identity be, be protected said that they agreed to volunteer work, quote, as a way to get my foot in the door, end quote, of a game development career. And that this is the rub. And this is the this is the problem with the the kind of like it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. <laughs> uh kind of nature of the games industry uh there's, there's this whole idea of you're not going to be able to get in on the ground floor of anything that's going to be uh well paid you're going to have to make a ton of sacrifices just to be able to get your foot in the door because you are one of thousands of individuals who wants to make a career out of making games 
And the problem is, is that the people in power at these studios know that. We've talked about this a lot when we talk about like labor issues at big publishers who uh, like are answerable to shareholders. They know that like, hey, we can X 250 employees because we know when we need, you know, 150 developers six months from now, there's going to be a, a line of people outside the door who are want to, who want a chance in this industry. And so this, the idea is like, okay, in order for us to be able to get ahead, what we have to do is shill ourselves out for free. Hopefully we meet the right people, shake the right hands, sit in on the right meetings, get the right name on our resume. Hopefully we're able to, um, uh, hopefully we're able to make the right connections here that we can grow this into uh, a career and people can start to value our work. And I just take a lot of issue with that. And and we should. And I, I talk to people who, you know, have aspirations in the games industry, who have aspirations in, uh, I work in marketing. I know people who have aspirations to work in like design for mar and marketing or in development for marketing or doing what I do. Um, one of the one of the industries I want to break into is the esports industry, and I see people who are working their asses off to uh, break into the uh, into the the esports industry. And there's this mindset of like, oh man, well I'm not, I don't even expect to get paid for the first year, you know, two years of doing esports work. Uh, I go on a site called Hit Marker Jobs uh, every single day because you know I, I've got my ear to the ground on esports jobs. It's it's my dream to work for an esports organization. Um, but yeah, I I look at these. Um, I look at Hitmarker every day, um, and they have a whole section for volunteer work. So, so right now, let me let me pull this up. Right now, Hitmarker has um, you know close to a thousand jobs being listed. A tenth of the jobs that they have listed right now are volunteer. Um, I wanted to find one. Let me uh, while I'm scrolling through here. Let me uh, let me see if I can't find it. They may have taken it down. But I was scrolling through here the other day, and I was just curious. Like, look, I'm going to be honest. I have zero interest in working for free. Zero, zero interest in working for free. I've done it before. When I was trying to work to, to get into, like, games writing, I wrote for multiple organizations for no pay or very, very little pay. And I just have no interest in doing that anymore. Um, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. So uh, I have no interest when I'm on hit marker jobs in applying for these volunteer jobs. But I saw one the other day. Ah, I think I think this is it. Okay. I'm just going to throw these names out here too. <laughs> Knocked Gaming is a startup focusing on being a competitor in esports and building up creative talent. But keep in mind, this is a position for a CFO, a chief financial officer. The post continues. We are looking to compete in COD, Fortnite, Apex Legends, and other titles as well as provide an avenue for streamers, content creators, and fitness enthusiasts. We want to break the stigma that gamers are lazy. Quote, an arrow must be pulled back to fly forward, end quote. Um, we'll come back to this little statement uh, here. Uh, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. It, it's at the end that, that has the funny part. It says, this position will be a start of, uh, of the startup will be part of the startup group. We need a leader and a veteran in the space that can bring in business and funding for Noct. Here are your responsibilities. You need to secure funding, budget management, record keeping, strategic advisor to the uh, CEO and COO. Here are the fucking qualifications for this remote volunteer junior level CFO position at Noct Gaming Lifestyles who believes that they want to break the stigma that gamers are lazy. The qualifications are an MBA. You have to have a master's of business administration or relevant experience in the esports industry in order to do this fucking volunteer CFO job at Noct Gaming Lifestyle. an MBA and this is not like unique knock to gaming lifestyle is not unique in what they are asking for here what they are asking for is somebody insanely qualified 
to come and work for their organization to secure funding, manage budgets, uh, keep clean records, and serve as a strategic advisor to the CEO and COO for absolutely fucking free. A volunteer position. And they end their listing with this. First of all, this listing is no more than 150 words. Understand that this position is volunteer until Noct secures funding, which, by the way, will be your job. All right? We are building from the ground up and need a team of like-minded individuals. I wish you could comment on these listings. I love Hitmarker, by the way. If you are looking into, if you want a, a career in esports and are looking at for for jobs, they post tons of paid positions, tons of paid positions. But they also post. I wish I could sit down with them and be like, "Look, can you stop posting shit like this? Like, tell people that you are not going to uh, serve as a, a megaphone for their volunteer for us shit, especially this stuff." Hey, you need to have an MBA for us to consider you for this job you are not going to get paid for so that we can break the stigma that gamers are lazy. Well, let's break the stigma that gamers uh, treat their employees like shit. Let's break, the, let's break that stigma. Let's start there. And, and it's this whole like, and, and it's the problem with the Chucklefish story. It's this whole idea of like, hey, if you work for us, you're either A, going to be able to be part of something great, which let's be honest, the people who worked on on uh, worked at Chucklefish on Starbound were a part of something great. Sold a million copies, but they didn't see one iota of compensation from said success that they were they were a part of making. So it's either you'll be able to share in the success of something special, or we're going to give you the valuable experience that you need in order to move on to the next venture in life. I'll tell you what, man. I have written for a lot of outlets and I have applied for jobs at other paying outlets and they do not give a rip about the experience of me working for, you know, I'm try I can't even remember the names of some of the places that I wrote. <laughs> um, you know, like, and, and I, I wrote for Twinfinite, which was a great experience. I got paid for you know my time at Twinfinite uh, based on based on the views that I could generate. But you know, it, most of the time, experiences that you gain and don't get paid for is very rarely experience that people are going to value uh, when you go and try to apply for other positions. And so this whole idea of like, oh, it's a great way to get your foot in the door is just bunk. And I say that totally self-aware, and I've told this story multiple times on the Nightly Rundown and on PVA Radio, and I'm very transparent about this. A few years ago, I ran an outlet. I ran an outlet um, called Two Left Sticks, and, you know, grew too fast. Um, it grew, grew too fast. Too big, too fast. Um, tried to pull in extra support asked for volunteer writers who would get paid on views um, with the hopes that, you know, oh, we are going to be able to pull enough views in to, to, to pay. But in all honesty, the people that wrote for us didn't generate enough views to, to, to get paid anything. And I feel terrible for that. Terrible for that. And I, I wish I could go back and, and redo all of that, but I've promised myself... Two things. Number one, I will never ask somebody to give any of their time, energy, or effort in building something that uh, they will not be getting compensated for. To to build something for me that they're not getting compensated for. Like that was a. And the second thing I promised myself is I'm not going to work for anybody else to build something for them for absolutely free. Um. I'm very sensitive to these kinds of things now because I realize how shitty it was of me to ask people to do that. And I realize how shitty it is for people to ask that of me. Guys, look at this. A chief financial officer position that they want to have an MBA 
to work volunteer until they can secure funds, which will, is, is a part of your job, job description. I just... That's Kafiti says, at least you had the intention of paying them. And mine was naivety, uh, naivete on my part of thinking like, okay, if we bring these people in, like here's the, here's the, the views that I'm pulling on my stuff. If we pull other people in and have that same quality and they share it as much as I do, you know, we'll generate those views for them as well and be able to pay them. Uh, and it was just, I was dumb. Like I was dumb and misguided and incorrect about my expectations of what, what we were able to, able to achieve. Um, I luckily met Cody through that Avenue and Cody has become a close friend of mine and, uh, an awesome partner in the podcast that we, the, that we put on and those sorts of things. So there's been, there's been good that's come from it, but I learned a lot about myself, about the industry, about, things that you should expect, but we live in this culture. Like uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago on, uh, on PVA radio. And it was when we had Andrew Nimsgern from popped off uh, on, and we had a lively discussion about this. And he was like, he, he basically told me like, Luke, he's, I think 22 years old. So he's like seven years younger than me. He said, Luke, people my age, like do not expect to get a paying job right out of college. <laughs> They, ex they expect to, yo, Bill for real, what's up? He says, very good talk in the chat. Yeah, we had a, we had a really good discussion. Um, he did call me old in the middle of that conversation, but that's beside the point. But he essentially said, like, look, um, we don't expect to get paid. <laughs> like, we expect to have to work for free and grind and because if we're not going to do it, there's going to be somebody behind us who's going to come and do it, and they're going to get that experience. And I just fucking hate that, man. I just think that's so shitty. Not of Andrew to believe, but that that is the culture and the world that he lives in that he feels like he has to partake in. Popped off says, wait. <laughs> this, this is Andrew in the chat here. Um, oh, <laughs> he says, I heard my name just as I arrived. We're talking about this Chucklefish story where uh, some former developers for Starbound said that they worked hundreds of hours on the game uh, when they were like teenagers and never, uh, never got paid for them because they were just promised like, this experience will let you get a foot in the door in the games industry. So I was talking about our conversation where you basically told me like, Luke, guys my age, guys my age don't expect to get paid for their first like job in the industry that they want to be in. And their, and their whole idea is like, if I don't do it, somebody else will, and they'll get the experience and the foot in the door in order to go and do it. And we've also, in case both of you have just joined us, we've also been laughing our asses off, at least I have, about this posting on Hitmarker Jobs uh, for a CFO for Knocked Gaming Lifestyles that requires you to have an MBA to secure funding because the position is volunteer until... Knox secures the funding that you will be responsible for securing as the CFO that is, again, volunteer with your MBA. <laughs> this is the world we live in, guys. This is the world we live in where you are being asked to do. <laughs> Pops off is just a plot. <laughs> this is the world we live in, guys. It's the world we live in. Like, it is this idea that, like, Oh man, as long as I start something up and I can slap esports on it, I can ask people to contribute to it for fucking free because, oh man, look, think how good it's going to look that you can put CFO of Noct Gaming Lifestyles on your, uh, on your resume. And it may be how the world works. I keep saying that's not how the world works. Maybe it is how the world works. That's the reason it, 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 these things continue to pop up and it's the reason people continue to apply. But it needs to not be how the world works. Yeah, Bill for real says need a cultural shift for sure on these kinds of things. We do. My time is fucking valuable. You know why I know my time is valuable? Because of how mad I get when people waste it. <laughs> That's how I know my time is valuable. Because I get fucking pissed when it gets wasted. On anything. 
Like if I if I have a three o'clock appointment and I'm waiting around for the person to show up for to till three fifteen and they finally show up, I am pissed throughout the rest of that appointment. I I have to keep a, a like a pretty robust calendar of client calls and meetings that I have to be in, and like I try to get people to understand like look if you're fifteen minutes late to a phone call that I've got. That's going to push my entire calendar 15 minutes because I got stuff lined up back to back to back because I recognize my time is valuable and I get upset when that time gets wasted. And I think the Starbound should do, uh, the Chucklefish should do what they can to make things right with these contributors who, can, uh, who developed, who did a lot of heavy lifting for Starbound. Um, and really like, that, that led to their success, led to a lot of great success. And we just need to get past this mindset in this industry that, oh man, experience is the most valuable thing that you can have. Um, time is the most valuable thing that I can have. Rent money is the most valuable thing that I can have. Money for food is the most valuable thing that I can have. And yes, it may feel really great that I am contributing and I am a like-minded individual that's attempting to build this special thing alongside you here uh, here at knocked gaming lifestyles um which yeah an arrow must be pulled back to fly forward and another thing i want to point out and, and my chair is sinking here as as i get weighed down with anger Another thing that I want to point out in this post from Knock to Gaming Lifestyles that I think is representative of the mindset that people have of why it's okay to ask people to work for free um, is, is this sentence right here. We want to break the stigma that gamers are lazy. And it's this idea of like, you always got to be grinding, man. It's all about the grind. You got to grind. You got to grind to get, get, get to the top, to get the job that you want, to get in the industry that you want, to work for the company that you want. You got to grind, grind, grind. And if you're not grinding, you're just fucking lazy. And it's not about that at all. <laughs> like me not being willing to work for free is not because I'm, I don't, I'm not lazy. It's not because I'm lazy. It's because I think my time is valuable. I think if I'm willing, if I'm going to give you my time to produce something for you, I should be compensated for that time that I'm giving to produce something for you. Um, so yeah, anyway, I feel like I'm talking in circles. Go read this article. It's just going to make you mad, but I think it's, it's valuable to see the talking points that these people were hitting when they were trying to get these people to, you know, give their time over. Um, by saying like you're you're gonna get your foot in the door because if you and this isn't just in the gaming industry it's just it's not just in the esports world if you have a job if you are wanting a job in any kind of competitive industry if it's finance if it's marketing I, I don't care what it is you're gonna have people telling you like oh man you're gonna need to work for free you know do it for free while you demonstrate your value and it's just it's bunk man it's bunk if you're gonna do something for free do it for yourself. If you want to get into esports stuff, like figure out a path to build something for yourself for free and demonstrate your value in that. If you want to get into game development, like do something for yourself. Start building something for yourself for free until somebody can see your value and wants to pay you for it. Um, if you want to get into marketing or finance, like do something for yourself for free to build the experience. Like don't do it for somebody else. All right, let's move on. Next story on the list. A new Apex Legends event, Voidwalker, starts tomorrow. This is from Owen S. Good over at Polygon. It says Apex Legends next event, Voidwalker, kicks off Tuesday and runs for the next two weeks. The event offers a new limited time mode, another, uh, another town takeover, and both free and premium loot. The limited time mode is called Armed and Dangerous, which limits weapons to long range and close up, namely snipers and shotguns. Loot in this mode is much harder to come by. A double XP weekend will take place Friday, September 6th uh, to the following Monday, 10 a.m. <laughs> Leron's obvious is Apex Legends Void Wallet. <laughs> um, also good to see you in here, buddy. 
co-host of PVA Radio. He does not get compensated. <laughs> he doesn't get compensated because we're literally him and I are building this together. So, a uh, little little different there. Um, uh, Double XP weekend will take place Friday, September sixth. Uh, <laughs> I demand that you double my pay. Uh, Friday, September sixth to the following Monday, ten a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, one p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on both days. Um, that awards double XP for victories and top fives in both account progression and battle progression. Uh, the town takeover is in Kings Canyon, where the remains of a Project Wraith facility have been discovered. Inside the base is a, quote, functional prototype portal, end quote, that can be used to get further into position or to leave entirely and reinitiate skydive. Respawn Entertainment said hidden lore details are throughout this new location. Here's, uh, here's the rub. Here's, here's you know, what we uh, talk about when we talk Apex Legends events from now on because of uh, the debacle that was uh, their Reddit thread a couple weeks ago. Uh, two tiers of free challenge-based loot accompany the mode, delivering weapon skins, badges, crafting resources, a loading screen, and a music pack. Uh, the premium stuff will be available for direct purchase in two rounds each a week long. Here it is. So you can see we've got uh, the Wraith Voidwalker skin. That's 1,800 coins, which is $18. Um, we've got some weapon skins for uh, 500. Uh, the Wraith Frame Void Shadow. I'm not positive what this is, Larry, if you're still in the chat and want to clarify there. Um, let me know. And then we do have some non-legendary skins here um, that are 500 coins, which is $5. So a little bit more advantageous pricing for this event than we saw in the previous event. And it's, you know, it makes a lot of sense that they're trying to play around with these prices. Um, and I don't know. Uh, Larry is much more connected with Apex Legends than I am, so he may uh, be able to to color this a little better than I can, but I think that these prices make a little bit more sense. So if this works the same way that the previous event worked, you have the loot boxes and you are able to purchase the loot boxes outright for $7 a pop. Each loot box was guaranteed to have one event item from it and there were no duplicates within it. And so like, let's say, okay, I don't wanna spend $18 on this Wraith skin um, but I do like all of the other skins as well. You could say like, okay, I'm gonna buy these three other skins for $15 for all three of them. And then I know for a fact that those, those items will not be in the loot, loot box that I buy. So if I spend $7 on the next one, maybe it's a, I've got a one in four chance of it being in there for seven bucks rather than uh, you know, buying it outright for $18. So the pricing, you can like scheme it a little more. I'm still not like, I think as long as you can only buy these packs and uh, these coins in packs of 10 or more, uh, I mean of 10, like increments of 10, this is always going to be shitty. But having the like $500 increments, I think is, is, is a good step forward because, you know, 500 divides evenly into a thousand. <laughs> um, so you know, you spend 10 bucks, you get two of these skins. So I'm okay with that. Um, I think that I appreciate their willingness, right? I appreciate their willingness to play around with the prices to see what works. I still think $18 is outrageous for a skin. You're telling me that three of these skins is essentially worth the price of a full game. I just can't buy it, man. Like, and, and I, no pun intended. Like I, I, I can't see it personally in a game that is a first person shooter that you cannot see your character at any point except for in the loading screen before you get into the game and on your banners if you ever become the leader. I just cannot see spending close to $20 on a skin. I just can't. So I think that that is still ridiculous and I hope that they start to play around with that a little bit more to see what's advantageous. What I'm hoping is that these $5 skins will just get blown out of the water in terms of like, oh man, people are buying these five, $5 skins left and right. People are responding to this price point and they may say like, oh, well, what if we made the, the Voidwalker skin, the legendary skin with this $10? Um, Respawn did say that six more legendary items will be added to the core loot pool, meaning they can be acquired via crafting or through packs. They'll also be available for direct purchase. So I take back what I said about 
playing with the odds of what you could get in the loot boxes. If they're going to continue to add legendary items, that's going to dilute your chances at getting the, the Wraith Voidwalker skin. So, Anyway, starts tomorrow. I'm a little done with Apex. I don't really appreciate being called a freeloader in a game that you've decided to uh, put out for free. So, Sorry, sorry, man. I won't be jumping back in, but I think Apex is still newsworthy. So, Next item on the list. Konami is working on a new game in a, quote, globally known IP. Uh, this is from Emily Guerra over at VG247. It says, Metal Gear Solid publisher Konami is working on a new console IP. Uh, the article reads, Metal Gear Solid publisher Konami is working on a currently unannounced console project based on a, quote, globally known IP. But it isn't Metal Gear Solid and it isn't Silent Hill. Konami's European president, Masami uh, Sasso, offered this tantalizing, vague tidbit to GamesIndustry.biz, describing the publisher's console plans in the wake of its recent, recent successes on mobile with titles like Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, things have been relatively quiet for Konami throughout this console generation. The Japanese publisher has released only a few games for console platforms in recent years, including Metal Gear Solid V and its spinoff. Uh, and its spinoffs, uh, Super Bomberman R, a Yu-Gi-Oh! release, and its annual Pro Evolution football series. Likewise, its latest physical re results, uh, which show a fifth consecutive year of profit growth, is largely a story of PES and mobile successes. But Konami has not forgotten about consoles. Quote, even with new platforms coming out, we believe high-end console games are the more, most important. We challenge for innovative ideas and technology within our console games and apply them to other devices. So we will continue to put effort into our console games, end quote, the Konami head said, quote, we also plan to increase our portfolio in addition to the multi-device uh, titles for PES and Yu-Gi-Oh. We plan to work on projects with other globally known IPs in the near future, end quote. So Konami is still out there. Konami is still doing things. They still believe in the... Uh, in the console space, it is not just um, mobile games and pachinko machines. Apparently, they still think that console is a place where they can make money. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what Konami's redemption arc is following the just complete and total PR clusterfuck that was the breakup with Kojima. There is a slew of individuals who just hold to the fuck Konami, never Konami idea that anything that Konami puts out, they will never be able to support. And it's just going to be hard to envision a release that can get people excited enough to drown out the, those voices, to drown out the, the people with a dissenting opinion against Konami. Um, do they still own Castlevania? I'm trying to think of like, what is a globally known IP that we know Konami works in that they could be working, uh, they, they could be working on a game for that isn't Metal Gear Solid and that isn't Silent Hill. Does Konami own Castlevania? But even then, like, okay, they do. They still own Con Castlevania. They still own Contra. So they can still possibly be working on a game in those spaces. But again, Castlevania will not have its it's a original creator. It won't have the name behind it that people associate with Castlevania. And so it's hard to see them like trying to get people excited about this game. I think regardless of what they're trying to do, um, they're always going to be followed by that sentiment, that, that fuck Konami, Konami sentiment. And if mobile is the place where they're able to find success, like more power to them. If pachinko machines are the place where they can find success, more power to them. But um, I don't know. I'm interested in it. I don't think anybody is really clamoring and saying like, oh man, really can't wait for that next Konami game to be announced. Man, Konami's really been quiet, hoping they, 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 they come out and say something. You don't see people in their E3 predictions being like, Konami's going to be on stage this year showing something off. What was the Metal Gear Solid spinoff called? Metal Gear Survive, that's right. Metal Gear Survive. Five and a half from Polygon, three and a half out of five from Games Radar, 6.5 out of 10 from IGN. 26% of Google users like this game. So 
you have to imagine this has been it was probably review bombed uh i don't think metal gear survive was a commercial success i don't think it was a critical i know it wasn't a critical success and so uh i just don't know what konami can do pro evolution soccer pro evolution soccer succeeds for the same reasons that like madden uh succeeds with ea that yes ea has the stigma among hardcore fans of like uh being an evil corporation who takes advantage of people through loot boxes, yada, yada, yada. Um, they, they've, they've got that stigma, but Madden is such a casually uh, connecting game. It, it connects to so many casual players that they're not, they don't, they don't see the evil EA corporation. Like they, they see the mistakes and the, the, the negative points in their little microcosm of Madden, but uh, they don't see it at the larger, grander scale that may be able to motivate them. They just want to play a football game. And the same thing with uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. Like, I think it succeeds because people don't associate it with Konami as much as they just associate it with Sim Style Soccer. Sim Style Soccer. <laughs> Sim Style Soccer. Um, and so they either overlook that it's Konami that makes it, or they're just unaware of all the shit that Konami has done um, and, and buy it. So. Yeah, Konami working on some IP. Uh, I mean, a, a new game in a globally known IP. Next item on the list. This one's a weird one. 2K20 comes out this week, NBA 2, 2K20. Um, they released a trailer that we're actually going to watch here. Um, let's see. Make sure my audio is not going to blow you guys out of the water here. They released this trailer about the new and improved my team and all of the different ways that you will be able to gamble in this game. Obviously, you're going to be able to open card packs, which are their version of loot boxes. So for the uninitiated, my team is a like deck building game where you get to build a team of basketball players um, that you will then be able to take into like online versions of the game. But your uh, the idea is like getting cards improving cards um and they're done through these loot boxes through these card packs so they're, they're just showing off players that are going to be available the designs of the cards but then they get into this stuff all right so here's a ball drop where you can i'm assuming exchange in-game currency for the chance to drop it here and look how excited these guys are getting then here's the here's this is the controversy right here the slot machine now that is a three second portion of this ad that we're going to rewind and just watch again really quickly but they just casually drop in oh did i skip it yeah i skipped it they casually drop in this uh little preview of the slot machine you can pull a little lever the things roll And so there was a little bit of controversy. You've got, you know, a wheel of fortune here that you can spin in order for to get a chance to win a uh, Steve Nash Dallas Mavericks card. So yeah, um, I don't think there's really anything else in here. But the controversy again is coming back to the whole idea of our loot boxes gambling and uh if so what should we do about them well the pan-european game information the peggy rating board uh was flooded with complaints filed against 2k20's my team trailer because of two things specifically the slot machine and the wheel of fortune because the the argument was peggy has this rule that if you if you are teaching people how to gamble in your game, that you are going to have to rate your game for adults. And so what people were saying is like, look at 2K. They've put a slot machine. They put a Wheel of Fortune. These are two games that are inside of casinos um, into their game. So how do you respond to this? So they released the response um, to it. They said, quote, we feel it's important to carefully explain when certain content is triggering the gambling descriptor in the Peggy system, but also to show when it does not at this moment, end quote. This was uh, what Peggy wrote in an email uh, verified by Eurogamer. Quote, a video game gets the gambling content descriptor if it contains moving images that encourage and or teach the use of games of chance that are played 
slash carried out as traditional means of gambling. This refers to types of betting or gambling for money that is normally played slash carried out in casinos, gambling halls, racetracks. This does not cover games where betting or gambling is simply a part of the general storyline. Uh, the game must actually teach the player how to gamble or bet and or encourage the player to want to gamble or bet for real uh, for money in real life, end quote, it explained. The email goes on to say that while the trailer does highlight the various casino style games, they may not be a major component uh, in NBA 2K, uh, 2K20 itself. Quote, at this point in time, Peggy can only comment on the trailer that has been made publicly available, end quote. Um, and then here's the kicker. They said, quote, it is very, they are very aware that it may be too close for comfort for some people. End quote. To that end, the issue is being discussed internally, though we do not know uh, what that would lead to. Uh, we're back to this conversation. I'm so fucking sick of talking about loot boxes, guys. I don't know how you feel about this, but I, me and Larry talked last week about possibly making Gears Pop my topic and like getting real in the weeds about mobile gaming mechanics. But I just told him on the phone because I call Larry almost every single day. Uh, <laughs> I said, dude. I don't want to talk about mobile games because I'm fucking sick of talking about loot boxes and these mechanics. Because we're, I think we're bending over backwards to try to, I, I think the industry is bending over backwards on itself to try to accommodate things that they know are predatory. And this whole idea of like, oh, the rules for Peggy only, uh, only uh, apply to games that are teaching people how to gamble. Here's the thing about slots. People go to Vegas and play the slot machines because it's fucking easy. <laughs> it's easy. You put you put your your coin in the slot, you pull you pull the little lever, the things roll. If they line up in a certain way, you get money. If if they don't, you can just go again. Like it's simple. And so, yeah, it's not like poker where you've got to teach them the rules, the strategy of bidding, the strategy of like bluffing, the, those sorts of things. You it's it's not about that. But it is, in, its, in, a, in a way, teaching people how to play a slot machine. Yeah, it's a very simple premise, but okay, I give this in-game currency. I'm able to pull the lever. The thing goes. If it lines up in this certain way, I will get a reward. And if not, oh, I'm out that, uh, that currency, and I can you know, go again. And you can argue all of the things that you want to till you're blue in the face about, like, oh, you can earn the in-game currency really fast, yada, yada, yada. The point being... It's teaching you how to play slots. <laughs> and I think that that aligns. Twit Aaron says, I hate seeing one of my series going to shit. And I totally agree, man. I'm a huge 2K fan. Back in the day, NBA 2K, which one was the one with Shaq on it? Was that 2K4? NBA 2K covers. Because I want to make sure I get this right before I tell this story. 2K6 was the one that had, uh, had Shaq on it. So I'm 15 years old when this game comes out because it would have come out in 2005. 15 years old, I'm at the mall with my brother. He's seven years older than me. We were at this mall about half an hour away from town. And this was back when, you know, um, when the 2K games were 20 bucks. We go to the mall. There's like a pool table at the mall. And I told my brother, if I can beat you at a game of pool, you have to buy me the latest NBA game. He was like, all right. So we played a game, and I ended up beating him, I think, because he, like, scratched on the eight ball or something like that. But anyway, I've loved 2K for years and years. And I'm a franchise guy, sim player. I love playing 12-minute quarters. I love playing with, like, the hardest trade logic and the salary caps, downloading the draft classes. I, my brother and I spent more time, spend more time like making our roster moves than we do playing the game itself. Like we love the game and we love the depth of the, we loved the depth of the franchise mode, but it seems like every single year, less and less focus gets put on franchise mode and more and more gets put onto these RNG modes, the, the, my team, the, my player, the things that really like, focus on loot box and luck mechanics in here. And it just, it sucks, dude. I'm right there with you. It sucks to see these franchises going to shit because all they're concerned about is how do we get you not only to spend your $60 every single year, but how do we get you to spend the hundreds of dollars on, uh, you know, rebuilding your my player, rebuilding your my team, like each and every single year. 
it sucks. And it sucks because it's, it's drawing attention away from the things that made these games great to begin with. Um, Madden, oh my gosh, don't even get me started on Madden. I'm playing Madden over the weekend. And I always do the same thing. Like I'll have a running online franchise going with a friend or two um, that I'm like really into. We're playing sim style games. Um, we've like tweaked our sliders. We're, we're coming up with it. And then I always do just like a player mode where I play strong safety and just play on defense. Well, I go in to play, uh, to set it up. I play through my preseason games. But what I'm realizing is after every single game, I'm being given feedback as if I'm playing the like the the story mode where you play as a quarterback because the the coach is like, all right, Luke, you didn't do great this game. I need you to go out the next game. I need you to throw at least two touchdowns and have a, a passer rating of 75. I'm like, how can I do that? I'm playing defense. And then at the end of the preseason, I got cut. And it plays the whole, like, uh, good morning football or Monday morning court or whatever the fucking show is on NFL network. And it's like, Oh man, the Cinderella story's over. You got cut, but you know, you get, you get a, one chance to play two games at quarterback in college and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was playing safety. <laughs> and so I go online to look up like, is this a known glitch? And it's like, Oh yeah, this has been known since the first day it came out. And EA just doesn't fucking care because it's not attached to their loot box modes. And so for Peggy to just turn a blind eye and say, like, like, what we need to remember about Peggy and about the ESRB is that these are not consumer-facing, consumer-concerned uh, entities and organizations. They are looking out for the interests of the industry. And by that, I mean publishers and shareholders. And it is not in their best interest to go against one of the biggest sports gaming franchises on the planet and to hit them with any kind of uh, discipline over having very, very, very fucking clear um, gambling mechanics in their game. Oh, well, it doesn't teach you how to play slots. Like, what is there to teach you about playing slots? The whole point of slots, the reason slots works is because it is a very low barrier of entry to play, but you can sit there for fucking hours thinking I'm going to hit on the next one. It is a high yield game that is definitely bent towards the, the house's favor. And I imagine it's no different in 2K20. Very, very bent to the house's favor. But if you put your money in here, there's little, little chance that you're going to get anything back uh, close to what you put into it. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It fucking sucks. Like there is nobody to stand in the way for like, and I don't, I've, I'm on the record of saying this on this show and on PVA radio. Um, I don't want the government to be that guy either. Cause I like, I, the last thing I want is the government telling me what can and can't be in video games. Cause yeah, one day they may be like, Oh, well loot boxes can't be in video games. And I'm like, yeah, government, you're awesome. And then the next thing they're like, Oh man, you can't have shooting mechanics in video games. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Government, like, I don't want that. So I don't want the government meddling in this shit. But I also know Peggy and ESRB are, you know, protecting the wallets of the investors and publishers and, and these, and like, I don't know, I don't know how this gets taken care of outside of just people stop spending money on it, but that's clearly not going to happen because we're 10 years into this shit. All right. I've ranted enough. What time is it? I believe it is right at 10 o'clock. Look at me. My mental, my mental clock knowing it's 10 o'clock. Guys, that is going to do it for the PVA Nightly Rundown. If you're hanging out over here on twitch.tv slash PVA radio, make sure you stick around. I'm going to be playing some Overwatch with my boy Larry. I'm going to be trying that brand new season of competitive in Overwatch. Um, if you're watching over on YouTube, uh, we appreciate it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below. You can either watch this topic by topic, or you can watch it in its entirety over on youtube.com slash PVA radio. If you're wa watching over here on Twitch, make sure you hit the follow button uh, and stick around. Until next time, guys, we love you. And goodbye.